All right, so uh, you know, just in case anybody cares, I'll go through how I textured the rest of this. So basically we have our SpongeBob head and whether that's the foam head or the rubber head, that's kind of up to you with the displacement. Um, as far as the body goes, let me go ahead and pull up my reference. So I basically just have an image sitting over here and I'm gonna use that to uh, get colors from. So I'm just gonna click on this plus sign. Again, we're working in the Redshift space here. So any materials I create in my window material manager is going to be a Redshift material. We'll go ahead and call this one yellow. And I'm gonna drag this, I'm gonna select my body first. And uh, you know what, I guess I don't need any of this. I'm gonna take this volume builder and then hold down Alt and just turn that off here. So now, you know, this is a, a complex object that I just sent over from ZBrush. And basically what I did was, I'll, I'll do a live stream of me making this just for completeness sake uh, this week, the uh, next week or so. But I'm sending over just enough geometry to kind of get the curvature that I want without having to, you know, do a whole bunch of render tricks. But again, I do have very harsh, harsh creasing on here. So we'll go ahead and fix that as well. So back in Cinema 4D, we've got yellow here. So again, let's make a yellow material. I don't really care about the roughness right now. I'm gonna change all those values at once later on, uh, but I'll go ahead and make it a little rough. And then uh, underneath color, again, I'm gonna click this eyedropper and then just sample from uh, the image I had open. And then uh, for here, I'm gonna go into face selection mode. I'm gonna double click the legs and the arms, and that's gonna select all those faces. I'm gonna right click and say apply, and that'll be all the yellow parts. I'm gonna control drag down yellow color. I'm just gonna work my way down. I just wanna select white. This is gonna be different than the uh, white we have here. So on the head here, we have a white material. I'm just gonna delete that. We don't need that anymore, and we don't need that anymore. Uh, so again, white, go in here and double click the shirt and the lapels and the socks and the shoulders here and then right click and apply there may be a better way to do this again i'm, <laughs> I'm still brand new to cinema 4d been using it a whole two weeks now so i need to go through the uh, basics camp at some point but not today uh, we got red here for the tie and the bottom sock ring and we're going to say apply control drag down again blue for the top sock ring control drag down brown for the pants apply and then one last one this is going to be black for the belt and the shoes and I mean I'm just in face mode, uh, double clicking, shift double clicking all these and then right click and apply. Now, if I wanna change the properties of all of these, I can just hold down shift and click all of these uh, materials in here. And then if I wanna change the roughness, again, I can make these a little more rough or a little less rough and I'll go ahead and update all those materials at once. Uh, one thing, again, that I knew was gonna be an issue is again, that, that real tight creasing uh, on these objects. So let's go ahead and fix that in the shader. Uh, again, I don't want to bring a ton of geometry in here just to kind of have a, a fall off on those edges. So I'm going to go in here to the white material, go in here to node editor, and I'm going to say hit the C key. And we're going to say round corners, drag that out. And I don't need to see a preview of this. I'm just going to click this little mountain icon and then let's go ahead and close this down and we'll move this over and move this up so we can see that when I take round corners, and uh, I take round corners and I plug it into uh, the bump map. It'll go ahead and work. So keep an eyeball on the white stuff. And also let's go ahead and zoom in here because it's another interesting thing. These are two completely separate objects, right? But if you have round corner selected and you have consider the same object only checked off, which is off by default, you're gonna see if I crank this up to like two, it'll go ahead and round these corners out and it will treat this as one, as if it was melded together and it's gonna round the the uh, geometry between those two surfaces. Let me see if I can get a better example here. There we go. So on this side here, you're gonna see on this shirt, it just kind of melts into the other object. Um, now it's a little bit high. You don't wanna go crazy with this. So if you turn it back down to one, that's just a nice soft fall off. And that's probably, I don't know, probably as high as I would go, maybe 1.5 on here. And then if I wanna apply this to the rest of the materials, I can say this round corners here, control C, and then we'll go in here to uh, yellow. We don't really need, it's just the arms and legs. Uh, red we'll go into and again node editor and we'll say control V 
and round corners into bump map. And you don't need a bump node in between round corners and bump map. You don't need to go in here and say, you know, bump map, kind of like we did when the, we had a displacement texture and then we had a displacement node that we had to go through. You don't need this node. You can take that round corners right into here. So now you're going to see instead of, again, if we double, cl uh, double click this to turn that off, there's our really sharp edges here. We're going to take this round corners right into that bump map. And that's going to go ahead and round off those edges on that red. Makes it look a lot better. And if we want to go to blue, all you got to do is just, you know, tap on blue, control V to paste round corners, plug it into bump map, again, brown, control paste, or control V, sorry, uh, black, control V, round corners in, and uh, we're good to go. Everything has round corners, looks a little bit nicer. We turn our head back on, and there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn that head back off, just alt tap volume builder twice, and we'll go ahead and bring Patrick down. Let's go back into object mode here. Right click Patrick and say reset transform. And I'm gonna move him over to the right. Now for Patrick, we need a uh, material. So I'm gonna click a new material. We'll go ahead and call it Patrick Matt. We'll just drag it onto him. I'm gonna double click it. So let's go into the node editor here. I like, I like, I like nodes. So we'll move this up so we can kind of see in here. And uh, the color, we got that from ZBrush, remember back in ZBrush here, we were able to transfer our poly paint. Go back up here to sudden level five. Uh, if we turn on our poly paint here, which again is just vertex color. So this is just vertex color. Again, if I go down to subdivision levels, you're gonna see how low res it can get. But with a lot of geometry uh, and that paint that is vertex color, we can go back down here to texture map, new from poly paint, clone texture, go in here to texture, export, We'll just drag that right onto our desktop as a PNG. Name it Patrick Color. And then back here into this file here, we can just drag Patrick Color in here and then just plug that into our diffuse color. There we go. Now he is very, very shiny. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, we did do uh, the Adobe Substance SBSAR uh, in Redshift and Cinema 4D. And I also went over how to get like grunge maps and stuff out of this. So I'm actually gonna take this grunge map that we got out of Substance, drag that in here. And I'm not gonna plug this just right into the reflection roughness. I mean, it'll, it'll do something. Uh, if we wanna see what this does, just tap this little S to solo and you're gonna say, okay, it's it, wherever it's darker, it's gonna be shiny. Wherever it's lighter, it's going to be uh, rougher, but I want a little bit more control than just plugging this map directly in there. So first let's give us a little control over how we can control these uh, lights and darks. I'm gonna hit the C key and we're gonna go in here and say scalar. Uh, actually, if you do ramp, you can use either one of these ramps. Uh, for some reason, I like to use a scalar ramp when I'm in this node editor. Uh, so with scalar ramp, I'm gonna go in here and say out color to the scalar ramp, general input, alt input, and then this result into our reflection roughness. So now if I solo out scalar ramp, you're gonna see it's not gonna change because it's taking this grunge map and just bringing it in and not doing anything to it. However, I can go down here to the ramp here and I can change these settings. So if I can, I can click on these and change these curves and you're gonna see it's gonna update uh, on here. And in fact, eh, I guess it's best to look in here. You can actually look at this little preview window too. Uh, but this is essentially making the whites, if I take this one and drag it up, it's going to make the whites uh, more prominent. And if I take this one and drag this one up, you can see it's gonna increase the contrast. And I can do an overall uh, effect too. So if I scroll, or I go, sorry, go to your under settings, there is a min and a max, but you can also just drag these. So if I drag this in, you see it's gonna get very light. And if I drag this up, that's gonna kind of clamp the black value. So it's only, it's not gonna ever go to super black because super like black is like super shiny. And I don't want this to ever really reach super shiny. So if I take this left one and just drag it up, that's gonna kind of clamp those lower values. So now it's just kind of a, a the darkest it'll get is kind of a muddy gray. And then I can go through here and again, just click these uh, sliders here in order to make those changes. And again, if I drag this value down, that's actually gonna clamp my whites. So now instead of going to super bright white, uh, if I just drag this down, it'll kind of cap out at like a light gray. Uh, so you can use this to kind of dial in the overall look for your uh, grunge map. So if you wanna see how it's actually affecting your mesh, 
uh, go in here and turn off solo so that way you're seeing let's also go into this area light and let's turn this down to like 40 and he's very light colored so I'm not sure if you'll get a real strong read of what that roughness is doing uh, but essentially you can go back into the scalar ramp and adjust it however again if we go back in here to solo you're going to see it's pretty big grunge texture you know wrapped over his entire body so if we want to uh, tile that a little bit more i can go in here hit c and do a triplanar a triplanar no so i'm just going to drag this one in and uh, i'm going to take the scalar ramp we're going to plug it into the triplanar node input texture on x and if we click here you're going to see same image on each axis is checked on so image x is going to be uh, apply to all the axes of that triplanar node. Uh, the scale is also set to 0 0.01 by default. So if I plug this into our roughness now, and we go into solo on the triplanar, you're going to see it's tiling it more. But if I want to control that scale, I got to go in here to triplanar and I got to change all these values. Uh, that takes too long. So I'm going to hit C. I'm going to type in value, and we're going to take a math value. And again, I don't need to see the preview, so I'm going to turn that little mountain off. And we're going to take this result, plug it into our triplanar under coordinates scale, and then I can just change this one uh, float here. So if I want to do a 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, it'll go ahead and update. So let's say uh, 0.15. Oh, that's way too high. Say like 0 0.008. And now we have this image all over our um, object here. If I want to kind of blur these seams a little bit, I can go back into triplanar, uh, crank up this blend amount. So again, as it crosses over those axes, uh, it'll get a little bit softer in there. So now we have this all over, tiled all over our object pretty seamlessly. And then again, we can go out of solo mode here. And that'll be uh, the resulting render. Now, if I want to take all this and apply it, I can just grab all these nodes, hit Control C, and let's go ahead and apply it to uh, this material here. So our original rubber head material, we can hit Control V, and we can plug all of this back into that reflection roughness for our original rubber head. And I think that was it. That was the whole setup. For this and uh, again that's all, all on my art station page i'll probably update this page or add a new one uh, as a tutorial but anyway hope you enjoyed that hope it was fun click the links uh, to the other videos that i uh, have on my description they're really really good and uh, see you in the next one